you and I, we are always talking about query tuning. You know, when the query is running slow, we kind of look into the execution plan, we look at the query construct, and we are trying to fix the performance issue. We are trying to speed up the execution time of the query. And I was doing something very similar in a recent consulting engagement with a customer. And uh, of course, there were a bunch of queries that were not performing well. They were taking a lot of time to execute. And we were doing the same routine stuff and trying to figure out how we can speed up the performance of the query, you know, trying to identify the bottleneck, etc. And of course, in that process, I got the opportunity to look at the query itself. And what I saw was that some of those T-SQL, the queries were written so poorly, it kind of made me think that, you know, we should take a step back and look at the query construct itself. How are we formulating our T-SQL code? How are we writing those queries? You know, this goes back to the, the book days, you know, where we talk about the importance of database design itself, the schema the normalization and the responsible denormalization, choosing the right data type. Each of these things have an impact on that final execution of the query. And of course, amongst all these pieces comes the important part, which is writing the query itself, using the right constructs and formulating it in the right way, which is like writing for better performance, for the optimal performance that you expect. And like always, I took up those examples and I just created a few academic prototypes using the AdventureWorks database to kind of show you whatever I remembered, you know, in that engagement, the poorly written queries, and I made simple constructs of it to show that to you. And today I'm just showing you the problems, not really the solutions, so to say, but just kind of this video is not really like, okay, this is the problem and here is the solution. It's more like the, you know, a food for thought so that you take a step back and think about writing better T-SQL. So let's jump into action and look at some of these examples. So in all of these examples, uh, of course, I'm using the AdventureWorks database. All of these examples are simple select statements with where clause. And in the predicate, we are using uh, one or the other attributes. And the summary in all of these examples are while we have the index on this attribute, which we are using as a predicate in the where clause, the index is not being seeked upon. The optimizer still uses the index, but for scanning, not for seeking. And when you look at the construct here, you know, the, the construct of the where clause itself, you'll start getting ideas, you know, bells will start ringing as to what's going wrong. So let's uh, look at about four to five such examples. Let's use adventure works. And first I will show you that the index does exist. I'm using the first table here, which is person.email address. So let's see what indexes we have on this table. So you will see that there is a non-clustered index on the email address column. So of course you expect the optimizer to use the index. And, and you know, when we are talking about non-clustered indexes, using the index, we invariably mean that the optimizer is seeking upon the index. I mean, that's what we kind of uh, implicitly want to say, not really scanning, okay? So using the index here, I would interchangeably mean that the optimizer is seeking upon the index. But now when you look at this construct, select email address from this table, where email address like, and now you can look at the construct of this predicate here. We say percentage, we are using a wildcard character here in the beginning of uh, forming the predicate uh, and we specify the literal. So let's go and execute this, jump over to the execution plan and you will observe that the optimizer is not seeking, instead it is scanning. Poorly constructed T-SQL has resulted in the optimizer scanning instead of seeking. Let's take another example. So we have a table here, production.product, okay, and I am using this attribute name, which is the product name in this example. Let's go and execute this particular um, SP help index to first see whether we have the index on name. Yes, we do have. We have a non-clustered index on the name column. And now 
our simple select statement we want to extract the name and we say where the length of the name the product name is greater than 30 and you can look at the construct itself we are applying a t sql function on the left hand side of the operator which means the attribute name is not clean kind of dirty uh, and this makes the query non-sargable and the optimizer will not seek so let's go and execute this and jump over to the execution plan and again you will observe that the optimizer is scanning instead of seeking another example of poorly written t sql for the couple of other examples i thought it's better to create an index so i'm going to create an index in front of you in this demo on this attribute total due which is part of the table sales order header and total due is, is, has a lot of numeric data so let's go and create a non-clustered index on total U. Okay, it's already there. No worries. Good. So let's go and look into using the system stored procedure SP help index and see. And why is it taking so much time? Okay, we have the output. Okay, total due. So we have a non-clustered index on total due, which you can see here. Great. Now let's run our queries. First example we want to pull out data from total due so you know the optimizer is going to touch the index because that's the only attribute we want and i've purposely written the queries that way and now of course our predicate where total due this is the interesting part okay total due into something greater than some value right and you know this mathematics before the operator on the left hand side of the operator causes a lot of issues so let's go and execute this jump over to the execution plan and again you will observe that the optimizer is seeking i'm uh, sorry scanning instead of seeking and likewise uh, this one is a silly example but still will make sense even if this was another attribute so i just kind of want to send the message to you so you say this attribute versus a uh, plus um, add to some other attribute again doing some mathematics greater than some value which will again make the query non-sargable so let's go and jump into execution plan and again you will see optimizer is not using the index in the right way which is seeking not seeking and it is scanning look at this for whatever reason you're writing these kind of queries okay so you are saying select count star okay from sales order header and now you say where total due is equal to and on the right side you put a case statement and when you do things like this let's go and execute this jump over to the execution plan and you can again see that the optimizer is not able to seek on the index this is the index we created ix total u so it's scanning but it is not seeking so while you do all your performance tuning stuff query tuning stuff all great you're identifying the bottleneck you're trying to fix them great but take a step back talk to your developers talk to your application team etc and the idea here is to uh, think about writing better t sql just not writing anything under the hood and then the pressure is on the database folks to ensure that they are executing in a reasonable amount of time so taking a step back and thinking about writing better t sql efficient t sql the constructs should be properly constructed that's the idea hope you enjoyed the video happy sql if you like the content give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you're notified on new videos most importantly visit sqlmaestros.com there's a lot of sql learning resources out there video courses master classes lab kits ebooks blogs hands-on labs and a lot more Follow us on Twitter at the rate sequel maestros and myself a underscore Bunsel. Last but not the least, do subscribe to our newsletters. See you soon in another video. Goodbye.